Welcome, my friends. We're gathered here seemingly together because we're doing it in a new way. It's our second time round, and uh, I really felt on the trip here that I may not see you with my eyes, but I see you with my heart, my heart's eyes. I don't know if that's in the word or not, but it's certainly a clear thing for me. We are at the River Valley Church in the building, in the community building, and we are going to gather at this time and uh, primarily, I believe now for church, our time is to worship God and thank him for getting us in this place. Thank him for helping us through. We give all thanks to the Lord. If you've got your Bible, I've got a beauty here. A big rescue, Psalm 91. Just the back of this Bible, I hadn't read it for a long time, but it says, so you picked up the big rescue Bible. You are in for the adventure of your life. The big rescue is the best story ever told, and it's all in this book. If you thought God hung out in the sky doing nothing, think again. Read the big rescue Bible and find out how God saves people and a planet that can't save itself. Psalm 91. Live under the protection of God Most High and stay in the shadow of God All-Powerful. Then you will say to the Lord, you are my fortress, my place of safety. You are my God and I trust you. Read the whole lot if you get a chance. It covers a lot of what we've been subject to at this time. This is a short piece from David Watson. He's been our reader. It's been a bit flogged to death, but that's good. Uh, it's full of life. This is his dialogue about that, that piece. And blow me down, it was our reading yesterday, and um, it was September 11. Can I claim God's protection? And this was written a long time before that event, that tragic event those years ago. Who who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. It's possible be, to be presumptuous in claiming that God will protect us. We are reminded in this psalm um, of the devil tempting Jesus to throw himself off the temple off the pinnacle because God's angels would protect him. But such an action would have been rash, pointless and out of God's will. So Jesus refused to take it. In the same way, it's presumptuous for me to claim God's protection against ill health if I'm neglecting or abusing my body or in spiritual battle if I'm not spending time with the Lord or if I'm neglecting Christian fellowship or ignoring the principles of spiritual warfare. Nor can I launch into a new work assuming that God will provide unless God has clearly guided me into it. Such guidance to have included advice from mature Christians and not just my own feelings. In other words, we can only claim God's protection with assurance and truth when we are in the centre of God's will. This will involve certain actions or attitudes on our part, and these are linked with three words. Translated in the Revised Standard Version as cleaves, knows, and calls. Cleaving means setting one's heart on someone in such a way that absolutely nothing will affect the bond of love one has with that person. Knowing God's name means knowing his nature. And this psalm is full of helpful images and descriptions of God. For instance, he is the most high. Therefore, since we are in his shelter, we can with him look down on our problems. But first of all, God waits for us to call. 
He does not rush to our rescue automatically. If he did, we would quickly take him for granted. And taking anyone for granted spells the beginning of the end of that relationship. Hey, this is wonderful. It's grass that everyone's here, that we are gathered, remember, always in spirit with not just our body in the church, but the church at large, the body at large, the Baptists, the Seves, uh, 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 the Anglicans, the churches in our valley, uh, uh, Presbyterians. So at this time, we rejoice because we're at one in the Lord. We're going to have some worship. And it's okay if you're a bit abandoned during that because that's what happens to me. If you see me in the background, it might look like a bit of a lolly. God bless everybody. I'll make a short prayer. I think it's good. Never miss out on pray without ceasing. Because, Lord, in your hands, everything comes together. In your will, our paths are straightened. In your holiness, Lord, extraordinary things happen and are possible from us ordinary people. It's in your hands. Amen. Thanks for that, Grant. Uh, really great to be able to do this one more time with you all. And uh, quick good day to all of you who are watching online, either while we're streaming it or later in the day. That's fine. You're welcome at both times. No less real. And we just want to say a quick hello to Raul, if you're watching from the other side of the world, Raul. Uh, we, we're doing a song just for you. Well, not just for you, but... We're doing a song that reminds us very much of you, and mm. it's got something to do with the Rose of Sharon, but you'll find out. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, let's, uh, let's get into that place. Some of you will have downloaded the words as, uh, so you can sing along, and we really encourage you just to dance like no one's watching, and if no one's watching, then dance, I think. Here we go.
God himself has paid the price That all who trust in him today Find healing in his sacrifice I will wait for you I will wait for you As we wait for God, it's a very real posture to get into it, especially we can really identify with it during this time, during um, uh, what's happening in our, in our country and all over the world, in fact. But we wait with the expectation that God will speak. We wait with the expectation that something is going to happen and we just need to be attuned in our ear to hear his voice, which is kind of what this song is trying to explore that we worship a God who does speak to us in so many different ways.
You're near the 
we call grace a mighty river flowing upwards from a deep but empty grave Ooh, and I'll praise you on the mountains and I'll praise you when the mountains in my way Lord the sun when my feet are so I'll praise you in the valleys of the same That, does, that song does just grab me. Um, so my kids at home know that every now and then I just get all, you just start to cry and can't talk anymore. And my kids are just so funny because they're, oh, there she goes again. Mum's leaking again. And it just had one of these like, no, oh, crying it takes like right in the middle of that song um, because I was just so touched by the mercy and the goodness and the grace of God. So, <laughs> you know, I just love, um, you know, this is not a performance. You know, worship is our, our adoration from the heart. It's us giving our affection and our attention to him. And just as I was, like, coming into that place, I was just, just my heart was just arrested um, by the kindness of God. And the goodness of God. And I just really pray that, you know, wherever you are in the kitchen, in the lounge room, you know, as you're watching this, I just pray now that you just feel the touch of his love and the power of his presence. Uh, just God meeting with you right here, right now. Thank you, God. You're just so good and we love you.
thinking of a, a scripture in Psalms that says the name of the Lord is a strong tower the righteous run into it and they are kept safe hallelujah yeah, Jenny's going to come up and lead us in some prayer now. what a beautiful time of worship we've had and we're going to now enter a time of prayer and the Lord as we know, is always listening. And he just loves to hear our prayers and to hear our worship. And prayer is a direct way of speaking to him. And we're going to start first with Jer reading from Jeremiah 29, verses 11 to 13. And it says, for, the, for I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. Then you will call upon me and come and pray to me and I will listen to you. You will seek me and find me when you seek me with your whole heart. I will be found by you, declares the Lord. Let's pray. Lord, you are worthy of our praise. You are the God who never fails to keep his promises. We thank you that in Jesus' life and death and resurrection, we see your love, your justice, your mercy and your provision and your victory. And you lift up those that are weighed down and you restore those who have broken hearts and you heal the wounded, you strengthen the weak, you bring joy to those who weep. You give freedom to those caught up in, in shame and you bring rest to those who are burdened and peace to those who are feeling anxious. And Lord, right now, we just come into your presence with all those things that have occurred in the past week or in this past period and we bring them to you and we lay them at your feet and Lord we just ask for your intervention where intervention is required 
and we ask that you put on our hearts those things that we need to do or we need to change. And Lord, we just ask that you might help us have eyes only for you. And Lord, we just lift up our leaders to you. And we just thank you for the incredibly difficult job that they've got, that you are with them, Lord. We just pray that that they might feel your presence, they might feel your leading, and they might come to the conclusions that you have already come to. Lord, we ask for you to speak through them and for us to be obedient and to guide, um, to do the things that they are asking us to do. And Lord, we just pray for um, all those affected by COVID. We pray for those that are working in the industry. We pray for those frontline workers. We pray for those in nursing homes. We pray for those that have lost loved ones. And Lord, we just pray for your almighty blessing to be upon all of those people, Lord. We pray for the school system. We pray for the families. We pray for your um, beautiful children. And Lord, we just ask that you might keep them, um, keep them focused on you, Lord, that they might feel your presence, that, that you might send people into their lives just to bring them into your presence. And Lord, that you might just guide them and encourage them and give them whatever they need to be able to get through this period. Lord, we just thank you for this beautiful community. We just thank you for the way that your your, um, great um, compassion is shown in this community for all the good things that are happening, for the way that people are connecting And we just pray for those that might not have that connection. We just pray, Lord, that you will send people their way to encourage and guide them. And Lord, we lift up this school community in particular and we just pray, Lord, for a blessing on the the teachers and the staff, the families and the children. And we just pray that you will um, be with them also as they struggle with doing education in a different way. Lord, we lift up Adam to you and we just thank you that you have brought us, brought him into this River Valley community and we just thank you for the beautiful way that you've wired him and um, we just pray that you will bless his ministry amongst us in the most amazing way, that you will bring new life where new life is needed. Lord, we just pray for the direction of this, your church. We pray that you will will just guide um, all of us into this new season. And Lord, that the ultimate glory will be yours and people will be turning to you for for their guidance. Lord, we just open our hearts to receive your word today. And we just pray that you might increase our faith. And we just now join together as we pray the Lord's Prayer. Let's pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Yours will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our debts as we have forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. Amen. I'd just like to invite Adam to come and share his message with us today. And just really looking forward to us hearing your word through him as he speaks. I pray a real blessing on the words that will come out of his mouth that they will be words that um, will build people up and encourage people to turn to you. Amen. Well, thank you, Jenny, for that beautiful prayer and and introduction. And 
Um, I just like to start by saying how humbled and um, and grateful I am to be here today, able to to share the word of God with with your River Valley people, um, and to really yeah delve into His presence. So just before we start, I guess the the purpose of this message today is just to really ground us again. Um, the world's been pretty crazy, pretty crazy, and we can get a lot of grounding and a lot of comfort from the Word of God. So to start with, I guess I want to ask, how many of you guys have woken up one morning the last few weeks and thought to yourself, what in the world is going on? What is happening here? COVID-19 has taken the world by surprise. It's showing us all just how vulnerable, how fragile, how temporary that everything in this world can be. And when we open the word of God, we see that the Israelites knew what this feeling was like too. The Israelites, there are, there are people who have had their fair share of, or more than their fair share even, of, of defeats, of victories, of pleasures and of pains. And if we turn to the book of Isaiah, we read in chapter 43, verses 18 to 19, Forget the former things. Do not dwell on the past. See, I am doing a new thing. Now it springs up. Do you not perceive it? I am making a way in the desert and streams in the wasteland. Now it's important to understand that at this point in time, uh, the Israelites, they were, they were doing it hard. They were in captivity. Um, and I think that's something as Victorians we can relate to at the moment. We feel like we've been locked up for far too long. The Israelites, they'd lost everything that they'd once taken for granted. And when I speak to people in the streets, they can't believe that some of them have lost the opportunity even to, to earn a living, to go to work. And I guess the Israelites were really thirsting, thirsting for their promised land for the blessings that God had promised them. They wanted a better world. And at the moment, I think we all share that feeling. The year 2020 is going to go down in history as an absolute shocker. We've lost so much of everything that we thought we were going to have forever. There was so much so much of life that we took for granted that's now been taken away. And it appears that we've been put in a place where as people we have to wake up every day and continue to go on with life, but at the same time, everything but the very basics has been put on hold. River Valley Church, I honestly believe that God is utilising this pandemic as a chance to shake up his church. Now, don't hear me wrong. I'm not suggesting that God has unleashed this pandemic, this pandemic on the world. Uh, but what I am suggesting is that God is going to utilise this. He's going to utilise this time and he's going to utilise it to further his kingdom. Over the past few years, I've had a growing discontentment in my spirit regarding the way that we've been doing church in this country. And it's a, it's a discontentment that I am sure comes from the Holy Spirit. Now, I truly believe that there are some big exceptions to what I'm about to say. Um, there's some churches out there that have been doing Christianity so well. You know, they're, they're beautiful, beautiful um, families of Christian believers that, that are truly following the word of God. But I think of a rule, somehow as a church we've got lost. I think that in a way, we as a church have inherited a model of doing church um, from generations gone past, which served them well and was fantastic. 
but perhaps has left us feeling a little bit unfulfilled. Now, the question is, what do we do with this? What do we do? And I think the first part to answering that question is that we recognise that this feeling of unfulfilment isn't an unfulfilment in Jesus. Our Jesus is like living water to a thirsty soul. He's absolute fulfilment. He has everything that we could ever desire. So I think, in fact, we need to understand that what's leaving us feeling a little empty, what's leaving us feeling as though we're lacking, isn't Jesus himself, but it's the model that we've been conditioned to engage with him with. Isaiah 43, 18 tells us, forget the former things, do not dwell on the past. In other words, quit looking behind and start looking ahead. This God that we serve, he's the creator of all things. He put the stars in the sky. He numbered every hair on our heads. He made the heavens and the earth that somehow we got lost into thinking that what he wanted from us was to approach him, to worship him, to glorify him in the same old way, week in and week out. I think our God is... He's a God who's open to new things. He's a God who's open to us exploring He's a God who's open to us exercising the creativity that he's placed within each one of us. Now, it's important to understand that, that I'm not anti the traditional church service. I think the traditional church service has been a beautiful, beautiful thing. Um, and its integrity and its sacredness um, is something that um, I have a deep respect for. However, I can't ignore what the Holy Spirit has been telling me. And over the past few years, deep in my spirit, I believe that God's been saying three things really clearly to me. And trust me, I'm not somebody who often comes forward and says, God is saying this, but he's made this so clear, I feel it's my responsibility to share it. And I really feel that the Holy Spirit has been saying, that's enough, that's enough. I don't want any more religion. I'm tired of your tradition. What I desire is a family of followers who are willing to share their lives authentically with me and with one another. He's saying, let me lead, let me lead you. All you have to do is follow but follow me everywhere, every day, in public and in private. And he also keeps reminding me that the end is near and he's going to come like a thief in the night, so we have to be ready. God has already set into motion a new direction and a new purpose for your life. The questions that I want you to take away with you today are you willing to follow him? And who are you going to take with you? This whole COVID-19 thing has made us all sit up and pay attention to prophecy within the Bibles. I certainly don't believe that this is the end of everything. However, I do believe that what we're experiencing at the moment is a foreshadowing of things to come. God's word warns us of famines, of plagues, of earthquakes, and it tells us that these things will increase in occurrence and in severity, just like it does with the, with the pains of childbirth. So I think what we are seeing here is simply a foreshadowing of things to come, 
and we must be prepared for it and not be surprised. In Luke chapter 21, verse 11, it says, there will be great earthquakes and various, in, sorry, there will be great earthquakes and in various places, famines and pestilence, and there will be terrors and great signs from heaven. And Matt 24, 7 says, for nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom, and there will be famines and earthquakes in various places. And then 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 1 to 5. But mark this, there will be terrible times in the last days. People will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boastful, proud, abusive, disobedient to their parents, ungrateful, unholy, without love, unforgiving, slanderous, without self-control, brutal, not lovers of the good, treacherous, rash, conceited, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, having a form of godliness but denying its power. And I think if we're all honest, we can see those things occurring more and more. But we at River Valley, we're not going to get caught up in these things. We have each other to keep us focused. We have each other to keep us accountable and to feel supported. I want to leave you today with a promise, and it's a promise that comes in the form of Psalm 91. And it says this, Those who live in the shelter of the Most High will find rest in the shadow of the Almighty. This I declare about the Lord, he alone is my refuge, my place of safety. He is my God, and I trust him. For he will rescue you from every trap and protect you from deadly disease. He will cover you with his feathers. He will shelter you with his wings. His faithful promises are your armour and protection. Do not be afraid of the terrors of the night, nor the arrow that flies by day. Do not dread the disease that stalks in darkness, nor the disaster that strikes at midday. Though a thousand fall at your side, though ten thousand are dying around you, these evils will not touch you. Just open your eyes and see how the wicked are punished. If you make the Lord your refuge, if you make the Most High your shelter, no evil will conquer you. No plague will come near your home. For he will order his angels to protect you wherever you go. They will hold you up with their hands so you won't even hurt your foot on a stone. You will trample upon lions and cobras. You will crush fierce lions and serpents under your feet. The Lord says, I will rescue those who love me. I will protect those who trust in my name. When they call on me, I will answer. I will be with them in trouble. I will rescue and honour them. I will reward them with a long life and give them my salvation. River Valley Church, I just want you to know that we are going to be okay. We will be victorious. We will find ourselves wrapped up in his loving arms. He will protect us. Just stay focused on him. Stick together and be there for one another. This journey that we're doing together is going to be an exciting one. It is time to listen to the Spirit. It's time to step into something new. And if we can humble ourselves and empty ourselves of all of the things we've learnt before and take on the new, take on the adventure, take on the creativity of the spirit, all anchored firmly in his word, the future for this place is very, very exciting. So again, I want to thank you for the opportunity to serve. 
I want to thank you for, for the opportunity to, to lead this wonderful church. It's a church that I've considered um, a very special place that I often um, thought or also almost knew would be my home eventually. Um, so yeah, it's, it's great to be back here. And um, as I finish, I just want to introduce you to Gran and Judy as they come forward now to lead us through the Lord's Supper. Really great to be with you all again today. And um, just before we get into sharing communion together, um, oh, just to introduce ourselves, Grant and Judy, and we are married, so we are allowed to stand this close um, and share from the one cup. So we are trying to be good. I hope you all are too. Um, yeah, it was strange uh, out waiting uh, to come in to record this, and I said to Adam, oh, it's really, I've got a really weird scripture for communion today, and um, uh, not knowing what he was going to be talking on. And um, it's just amazing how the Holy Spirit uh, works and challenges us all. So I'm just going to read that scripture to you. And it is out of Matthew 24. And um, it says, um, Keep awake, therefore, for you do not know on what day your Lord is coming. And I thought, why is this scripture coming to mm. me today? And um, I was reading at home and it just jumped out at me. And I, some of you know I've got sleep apnea, so keeping awake is sometimes <laughs> um, a problem for me. Um, but it's not that sort of keeping awake. And it's being alert and being aware. And Grant and I had a bit of a chat this morning and we were talking about... Um, slothfulness. <laughs> and um, Grant was saying how it's sort of often about considered about being slothful in your work or something like that. But um, he was saying to me, I think it's more about we can be very slothful by not being present and not being aware um, of where we're at at the moment um, with the people we're with. Um, perhaps um, just not paying attention. And um, I think perhaps during this time, um, a, a few of us have been more aware of one another's um, feelings and um, how they're going and the old, are you okay, sort of questions that have been asked. So just keeping awake and um, being alert uh, because our Saviour is coming and our Saviour is with us today and with us always and mm. comes and reveals himself in so many ways every day. And um, as we take communion, this is another way that we remember that our Saviour is with us, that um, he, has, he is our Saviour mm. and um, that we, can, we look to him for all that we need. And, um, yeah, so that was just my thoughts for today. So uh, God bless you with that. And, um, Grant, would you... Uh, Let's celebrate communion together. Pray for our... Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Lord, in your hands we live truly because of what you've done, Lord. We are fully alive now and ready, Lord, for your will in our lives. Thank you, Lord, for placing us right here at this time because that's your perfect timing. No matter where anyone is today, in you, Lord, they're in the right place at the right time because that's what you do for us. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for all you've done. And we're going to celebrate that, uh, that occasion, relive it together now because what Jesus did was he gave up everything uh, as the Father did, gave up everything and he put his body on the line for people that uh, had no understanding of who he truly was. And they broke his body, they broke it into pieces and because of him submitting, because Christ submitted in his submission was his power and he gave us life. Now we live 
because of what he's done. Uh, take a knee, uh, join with us in, um, with thanks. Yeah. And this represents his blood that he spilled, he allowed to be spilled because blood was needed for the new covenant to bring us the opportunity to be who we are today, to do what we do now. We live it. Thank you, Lord. So our Saviour is with us and let's keep awake and alert and um, focused on him in our midst, in the many forms in which he comes um, each day. God bless you and um, we'll hand over. Amen. Thank you. So may the peace which passes all understanding which has its source within the very nature of the Father, the Son and the Spirit, be with us in the coming days and weeks. Be joyful, it says in 1 Thessalonians. Be joyful, pray continually, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Amen. I hope you have a blessed week this week and thank you for joining us today.